Hey guys, what's up? Fan here again, and today I'm bringing you guys another video commentary slash guide, and the hero that I'm going to be covering today is none other than the newest hero in this patch, and that's going to be Sylvanas. Now, Sylvanas is classified by Blizzard as a ranged um, specialist, so much like Zagara and Hammer, um, you know, Sylvanas really specializes at pushing lanes um, and she does that really really well. If you leave her alone she's absolutely gonna wreck a lane and um, kind of also like Zagara and Hammer she also has enough damage output to be considered a ranged assassin um, you know much in the lines of Vala or Falstad or Tychus or anything else when you think of ranged assassin. So she's kind of like this mix um, where she can push really hard and she can also output a very respectable amount of damage in teamfights. <clears throat> and she just came out in today's patch of course. Now I've been playing her for quite a while, uh, bought her as soon as I got home and I've been trying out a bunch of different abilities with her. Uh, you know, I've talked to quite a few different people about what abilities they think is better, and overall, there's been a lot of different opinions on what the best Sylvanas build is. There's really no consensus as of yet, um, and a lot of people like a lot of different abilities. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what I've been using right now, and um, you know, in my opinion, it's the most fluid build. It's the most responsive one. Um, you know, it just feels really, really good uh, when when I play it. So. Without further ado, at level 1, you know, this this one's pretty universal. Everyone gets with the wind at level 1. It increases your range of their Q by 25%. Um, this is important because, you know, you're going to be spamming your Q pretty much the entire time <clears throat> you're playing Sylvanas. So it's absolutely imperative that you actually get, you know, the, the range in to kind of safely spam your Q off. Um, and, you know, that's very, very important. So definitely need with the wind at level 1. Uh, pretty much a universal pick up there. Just gonna spam all my abilities out there. <clears throat> Looks like he's going for the Sylvanas. But the Sylvanas jumped into the uh, into her base, so looks like we're gonna get go for the Thrall instead here. Passed our shield at the Thrall there, so that's kind of annoying. I managed to kill her. And now, I'm kind of blocking my carry in, unfortunately. I'm gonna snag those coins here. Um, and now I'm just gonna get out because I really don't have much life there and he's got a hat. But, oh, and there was a random Nova there, unfortunately. So now we're in a bit of a trouble here because they have all 10 coins. Um, hopefully, we can come back though. Um, but what I was saying, <clears throat> back to what I'm saying about Sylvanas and her abilities, so she has Withering Fire, and it can go up to 5 charges. Now, you know, every 2 seconds you get a charge, and whenever a lane minion dies, you also get a charge, which basically means you get charges very, very often. So what you want to do with Withering Fire is, if you don't think you're going to be fighting a hero for the next 5 seconds, uh, just spam it off, right? There's no mana cost, only a, a cooldown. So... Um, you know, when, when I was watching streams today, it seemed like most people were conserving their Withering Fire, which makes no sense because the charges come back so, so fast that it, it's really, you know, best if you just spam them off as soon as possible. Now, at level 4, what you're going to want is Venom, and Venom does the highest amount of single target burst damage out of all of these abilities. Um, an argument could be made that Ranger's Ambush does more consistent damage. Um, over time, but it, it forces you to use your E, and I think that's what's the what the biggest weakness of this is, right? If you use your E offensively, you're not going to be able to use it defensively, so that's that's not really what you want. Um, <clears throat> now, in case you haven't noticed, you know, in lane I've been mostly doing two things, right? Whenever you see the creep wave come to you, you want to throw a W onto there. The the poison effect is going to spread onto all the different creeps, and if it's close to the towers, you can see right here, it spreads to the towers too. So it's a lot of damage, um, very very efficient. So you basically every time your W's off cooldown, just throw it onto the creeps, let it spread, and you know push whenever you can. Here you can see I've disabled the tower, and I'm I'm trying to push it here. Little trick with dealing with avatars is if you just constantly go left and right, left and right, it actually makes their spikes, you know, it makes it hard for them to hit you with their little spike attack because it goes in a straight line. So that's what I was doing there. <clears throat> Alright, so coming back here, once again, I'm going to throw it onto there. Basically just going to throw out all my cues as well. And try and clear this wave as fast as I can. Now 
I'm actually going to go in offensively here. Threw, threw down the Envenom on the enemy Sylvanas, and it looks like we managed to get that kill, which is really, really good. <coughs> now, at level 7, there's several different options. Uh, the one I prefer at the moment is Unstable Poison. It basically, whenever an enemy minion or mercenary dies, it gives uh, an AoE kind of damage upon death. So it's like a corpse explosion, right? And it does, right now, 138 damage. Now, considering my auto attack damage was only 72, 138, which is, you know, it's like 140 damage, right? That's actually pretty impressive. It's twice the auto attack damage in an AoE. And it happens to every single minion that dies under the effect of Black Arrow. So every minion that turns black uh, releases that exp AoE explosion. And as you can see right there, it basically makes it so that <coughs> you have so much utility in pushing lanes. Like, you, you just go through waves instantly. And if you... Hold on one sec here while we fight here. I have a feeling that my character going to die here. So, I'm going to try and save her. Managed to kill that brother with uh, spamming my Q and basically just chucking my Envenom onto him. Pretty easy kill. And once again, you can see how fast I just clear the wave. Just, you know, once you throw the W on there and you start queuing things, as soon as the first minion dies, it just spawns a chain reaction that just instantly eliminates the entire creep wave. It's The utility is just actually, you know, so so amazing in my opinion. It's, uh, it's really, really cool. Um, I kind of compare it to Illidan's Immolation. So, Immolation is a skill that has good AoE damage, right? And it's on Illidan's W. And, you know, some people on Sylvanas like to get follow through, which does do more damage in, you know, like a team fight where there's no creeps around. Um, however, if you think about Illidan at his level 4 talent, um, you know, Marked for Death does more damage in a 1v1 duel too, but no one takes Marked for Death. Marked for death, right? And that's because the utility. Oh shit! <clears throat> Just gonna get out of here right now. And like I was saying, no one takes marked for death on Illidan because the utility of uh, of immolation, of being able to clear creep waves really fast, of being able to clear merc camps really fast, and also having damage in team fights. Um, you know, having moderate damage in team fights. Like the utility of that is just too too good to pass up. Just gonna spam all my Q. Q's out onto that Tassadar. I saw he had used his E, so pretty easy kill there. That guy stepped too close as well, so pretty easy kill for us on that guy. Right now I'm gonna disable this fort, and this is really the strength of Sylvanas. You know, pushing with your team, you, you can see the fort's not firing whatsoever. It's immensely easy to push down buildings with Sylvanas if you have your team to back you up. I constantly throw out my W onto the creep wave to clear it, and once again you can see how fast the creep wave just explodes. <coughs> and, you know, checking the damage charts, you can see I have so much siege damage, right? I have way more than anyone else. Um, only the other Sylvanas is even comparable. And similarly, I have the most hero damage on the team right now. Sylvanas doesn't always have the most hero damage, but it does a respectable amount of hero damage. Um, but the siege damage is really a good thing that you know Sylvanas excels at, especially with this build. Now at level seven, you can also get the shade form uh, for defense. It's it's actually really good because you can move after casting your E, right? So basically, you just cast E to go invisible, and then you have the option of uh, of taking that E teleport or not, right? So invisibility plus teleport makes in the Sylvanas like so so hard to kill. So you know if you're afraid of dying to something and you want to play a more defensive Sylvanas build, I recommend Shade Form. It's definitely really really good. For the most part though, I'm not that scared of dying on this hero, so I take the more aggressive push oriented um, build or utility oriented build, I should say, and I get unstable poison. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Level 10, obviously, you get Willing Arrow. Willing Arrow is by far the better of these two. Possession is just not so good, unfortunately. Um, but Willing Arrow, basically, it's an arrow, 90 second cooldown. You can shoot it, uh, you know, press once to shoot it, and press the second time to reactivate. Um, and the reactivation will make the arrow detonate. So, I'm gonna try and kill this guy, actually. Ooh. I might be dead. I just silenced him, so I'm not quite dead yet. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn and fight here. 
because that, that thing pretty much cut me off from running. Uh, managed to trade one for one, which is not the worst thing ever. Um, but like I was saying, so, you know, you shoot it once to uh, to kind of get it out there and then you reactivate it anytime you want to detonate the arrow, right? So you can detonate it anytime during its course and it's got a pretty long flight range. Um, I don't know, this is just a really, really strong AoE silence ability that also does nice AoE damage. So overall, very solid ult. But, you know, other than that, there's not too much to say about that right now. Level 13 is another skill tier that has many viable options. You know, obviously Spell Shield is good if you're taking a lot of damage from Novas or Zeratos or whatnot. Um, <coughs> for me, I personally prefer Evasive Fire. This gives you 10% movement speed every time you hit something with a Q. And uh, lasts for 2 seconds, I believe. And you can stack it three times so up to 30 percent movement speed and the wonderful thing about this is that it's really easy to hit things with your q as you can see so you basically in battle have 30 percent permanent movement speed buff and that's that's actually insane you know it makes it so that you're so incredibly mobile in team fights that combined with your e it, you're really really hard to kill <coughs> Not only that, but it also makes it so that you can chase enemies with ease because 30% movement speed, you know, obviously that's going to give you an insane chase potential. Uh, when you com compare it to like, I don't know, Rainer's Revolution Overdrive, you know, Revolution Overdrive only gives you, I think, a max of 25% movement speed and that's only if you uh, inspire, or 20% movement speed, and that's only if you inspire all, all of your allies, right? Actually, maybe it's 30%, but that's only if you use Inspire on every single one of your allies, so it's a very high requirement. This thing, basically, you press Q three times in a battle, and you, you have 30% movement speed, and you can just keep doing that throughout the entire battle. So overall, I, I feel like this is, in my opinion, uh, one of the more solid choices on this tier. Talk to some of my other friends, and uh, you know, K1 Pro from Maelstrom recommended Overwhelming Affliction as well as Splinter Shot. Um, both of those are quite good. Overwhelming Affliction if you want to pick off heroes, um, you know, if the enemy team has squishy heroes, and uh, the other one, Splinter Shot if the enemies have a lot of tanks to kind of soak up your damage or whatnot. <clears throat> so overall, you know, level 13 is a talent here where there's a lot of incredible options for Solanus. Once again, we're just pushing here. Level 16, once again, I think all, a lot of these options are viable as well. <clears throat> the one I, I typically, typically go for is either Cold Embrace or Blood for Blood. Um, the cool thing about Cold Embrace is you can use it on buildings. So every 10 seconds you can use it on a building to make it take extra damage, 25%. Uh, but for the most part, I think, you know, if you're just going for like a hero duel kind of build, uh, in, in solo queue especially, I think Blood for Blood is better. It gives the most damage output at least. I'm gonna back out here because two of our allies just died and don't really want, don't really want to challenge them down so many allies. I'm gonna come up here and clear top. Um, but back to this skill tier, level 16, you know, Cold Embrace is kind of like Nova's Crippling Shot. It's definitely very, very good if you can, um, if you can kind of coordinate with your teammates to kind of burst down one target at once, it might be better than Blood for Blood. Um, but, you know, still in like 1v1 solo queue duels, uh, I think Blood for Blood is the better choice there. But Blood for Blood, that guy, <clears throat> vastly outnumbered here though, so I'm going to retreat with my E. And yeah, not, not much I can do there. I'm just going to retreat. Actually, I'm going to try and get these two coins here. Got the coins. Gonna run away for now. Ooh, what the hell? Found a Tassadar. I'm just going to spam all my spells onto him. Um, yeah, just arrow him as much as I can there. But he has a lot of ally support, so I don't really... Oh my gosh, random Nova appears behind me again. This Nova's been really on my case in this game. And I will say, you know, Nova is actually one of the heroes that's pretty darn good at countering Sylvanas because, um, you know, her hunting wave is not instant and she has very low HP. So Nova can very, very easily kind of like one shot most of Sylvanas' life. Um, so yeah, Nova definitely a very good counter for Sylvanas, but other than that, you know, I think Sylvanas is still really, really strong right now. She's good at so many different things. Um, 
it's just pretty crazy. Um, another thing at this tier that you can take is Will of the Forsaken. Uh, you know, if your enemy team is very heavy on CC, so think Kerrigan, Uther, <coughs> Muradin, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and they're like trying to just dive you and kill you. Um, Will of the Forsaken actually gives you a cleanse on yourself, right? And it also gives you 30% movement speed for 3 seconds. So, overall, that's also a viable op option against very high CC teams, in my opinion. Um, but usually it's going to be Cold Embracer Blood for Blood. Um, so yeah. Alright, so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just waiting for my teammates. Um, you know, no no need to throw the game any further. We have two keeps. Uh, all we really need is a good team fight and we'll be able to win the game. Or a turn-in. And at that point, or at this point, a turn-in should be pretty easy. Because we only need 14 coins. Which, which in the grand scheme of things is not very many, right? So... Right now, my teammates wants want to fight here. This is kind of dangerous because if they have five people here, it's going to be a four v five. Um, and yeah, that Nova just took out like half my HP, more than half my HP. It's kind of kind of annoying. I'm gonna stay by my Malfurion so he can heal me to full HP here. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna toss my silence arrow. You can see I silence both of those guys and. We managed to get the enemy Sylvanas pretty easily. Managed to kill the Thrall here as well, so... Once again, we're in a pretty solid position. I'm just going to come here and clear this creep wave real fast here. And you can see how fast I cleared that creep wave. It was basically instant due to the explosions. Alright. I'm going to clear one more creep wave, I think, before I head to rejoin my allies. And once again, you can see how fast the creep wave just absolutely explodes under the level 7 talent there. Unstable poison. Just really, really cool. Hmm. Looks like my uh, Kerrigan there tried to solo the knights and got picked off by Nova, unfortunately. But we should have enough people here to secure the knights. And at this point, like honestly, we can do boss or we can turn in. I would prefer my team to turn in the coins because that would be able to get their last keep. But, you know, whatever. <clears throat> I'm just gonna get these coins real fast. This should also get us to level 20 or at least pretty close to it. Um, and once we're at level 20, I'll be able to get Bolt of the Storm, which makes me a little bit tankier, right? <clears throat> or not tankier, but, you know, adds to my survivability, which is always a good thing. It looks like they're busy with our Nazebo, and I see Thrall in bottom lane, so this boss is pretty safe to take. Uh, they killed our Nazebo, but we should be able to get this boss in exchange, so... You know, this, this is a solo queue, you can't really stop people, random people from dying all the time, so at this point, I'll take it. I'll take a boss for Nazebo any day. And... It looks like my team wants to push 4v5. I don't really think this is a good idea, but, you know... It's better to do something stupid as four people than, than to ignore my team and let them die 3v5, so yeah. I guess I will come here and try and push this. I don't know if I said this yet, but W outranges the attack, ta uh, attack radius of towers, so if you don't want to get attacked by the tower, just throw a W at it first. Ooh, I'm actually just going to one-shot that, <clears throat> that avatar on the side there. I used my blood for blood and venom and ultied him. So very easy kill on the after, and because of that, I think we if this push is gonna be able to get us the win here with the golem. I'm gonna disable the fort here. Just constantly use spells on it to keep on dis disabling it. And yeah, at this point, uh, I'm gonna need to run here. I'm gonna bolt away and mount up here and just run away. I see a Nova. I'm gonna need to dodge a snipe here. Manage to dodge it. <clears throat> and, ooh, he got me with the wolf, unfortunately. But overall, that was still a pretty good trade. We got the last keep on their side, and I think we're gonna get a little bit of their core HP as well, so that's good. Once again, we do need one more turn in. Um, they don't have quite enough coins for a turn in, but neither do we. Uh, but at this point, we're missing only one keep, and they're missing three. So there's going to be a ton of pressure on their exposed core there. <coughs> <sighs> well, 
Well, unfortunately, the pubs got picked off again, and, um, you know, they do have enough coins to turn in now, I believe. Yeah, they have 21 coins, definitely enough to turn in. So what we should do is basically head over to turn in and stop them. Alright, so overall, you guys can see my Sylvanas build here. Um, at level 20, you can also get Deafening Blast if you feel safe. However, there's like a Nova and Thrall and just lots of heroes in this game that can blow me up. So I don't I don't feel completely safe, so that's the reason why I went for Bolt of the Storm. Just a lot of, uh, you know, utility, a lot of survivability added onto that. So always a good option. And I think I've pretty much explained every other talent as well. So right now this is pretty good. All we have to do is defend the turn in because they have three lanes pushing against them. Um, so all we have to do is stall. We don't have to go to ham or anything. <coughs> as long as we don't get picked off, like this Malfurion is dangerously close to just randomly getting picked off by a Nova. Don't really know what he's doing there, but whatever. Oh, there's actually a Nova right here. I actually got body blocked. Okay, now he's right here. I know he's here, but I don't have anything to, to get him out of his cloak, unfortunately. So we're just gonna chill here. Hmm, where is that Nova? Well, I know that Nova's around here somewhere, so I'm gonna be ready to try and silence him as soon as I see him. Oh. Blood for blood. Just dump all my damage onto the straw here. And we managed to get the Thrall kill, which is good. Might as well just turn in here. Looks like the monstrosity, um, which has been seriously buffed this patch. I see a lot of monstrosities doing a lot of work this patch. Managed to actually get our keep, which is somewhat unfortunate, but I'm, I'm just going to kill it right now. <coughs> I actually did half my HP really, really quickly there. It's kind of surprising. Actually, you need to, uh... Hmm. I was gonna say I, I need to go heal, but it looks like I don't have time for that. Teammates are fighting, and... I would like to save them from dying. Just gonna hope this Malfurion heals me in time. And I know the Nova's still out somewhere, right? So I'm just gonna wait for the Nova. Just waiting for any shimmer I see on the ground here. Alright, so it looks like Nova didn't manage to stop us, and that final turn in is gonna get us the win on this game. So this was quite a long game, but overall, you know, it was worth it. Got to show you guys the full Sylvanas build and explain a little bit about each of her skills. Um, so yeah, that's Sylvanas. Um, obviously, the one thing I didn't really say is her E. Uh, you guys saw me use it. It's not instant like Flawless Dash or False Stats Dash or something like that, right? So it doesn't quite work as a panic button where you're like, oh shit, someone's ganking me. You know, I'm just gonna press E and run away instantly. It doesn't quite work like that. It really makes you think, right? Because there's like a delay. Um, it has a movement animation. So it really makes you think and it really makes you kind of plan out your retreat. So, you, you know, the best case scenario is you know like one or two seconds beforehand that you need to retreat and you use that skill and then two seconds later you you know use your E again to get out of there. You know it's more for kind of like that plan type of retreat as opposed to like Vala or false dead where it's just like you hit that button and you're out of there right no thinking involved it's just kind of your panic button um, so I definitely really like that a lot and it makes the the hero harder to play in my opinion and makes it higher skill ceiling so very cool there and other than that that's about it for today guys thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you know pretty early on so I could be wrong about the skill build but right now that's the skill build I'm having the most success with and you know that's it for this video thanks for watching guys if you have any comments leave it in the section below and I will get back to you make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome builds and uh, guides in the future and other than that I will see you guys next time